There's just been a little accident. Run! With the car. What about this girl? This girl in the field. She was shot, Dad. You left her? You knew how she felt and you used her against me. No, no, it wasn't like that. We didn't know. Yeah, that's what you said last time. Well, Hammer's a crime thriller that takes place in a small town. Um, it's about a middle-aged man who realizes that his son is involved in crime, and he has to kind of infiltrate that world in order to try and protect him. And uh, along the way, they end up doing some pretty violent, heinous things that threaten to kind of destroy the relationship. So it's a um, kind of a pulpy crime film with rich themes about families and secrets and lies, and hopefully that elevates it beyond just typical genre fare. How's it going with you? How's Lori? We've been friends for about 15 years now. We met um, when we were both volunteering, or he was making a short film, sorry, at the local co-op, NIFCO. Uh, and I volunteered to be a sound recordist on his first short film. And uh, we've been friends ever since. I mean, you know, both fans of each other's work, kind of tracking what the other is doing. And when I wrote this script, he was the, he was the first person I had in mind. It's a lengthy process. I mean, he saw multiple drafts of the script. We had talked over the years. He helped me kind of flush out the character a bit at times. And so, yeah, I mean, he had to juggle other offers. You know, he's a busy, busy guy doing quite well for himself. So I feel fortunate that he, uh, that he agreed to come on board. Hey. I do a fair bit of work in commercial and TV in between, um, you know, trying to do feature films. So you're always kind of honing your craft. I mean, the budget was, um, you know, we made the first one for 250K and we made this one for like around two, two million. So the budget was bigger. But, you know, once you go union and you're traveling to Ontario and there's guns and motorcycle chases, it doesn't take long to eat the budget up. I'd say, if anything, I, I probably hone my skills working with actors. Um, you know, just learning how to talk to actors, really fostering that relationship. So it's really rewarding. Wait a minute. You said yeah, it's fine. It's not like he's going to call the cops. We have a Canadian casting director and a U.S. Um, director as well. And uh, yeah, so, you know, we have a list of actors who we think could be a good fit in the role. Will was certainly at the top of that list. I've been a lifelong fan and I wanted a character actor of his type. The one that everyone may not know his name, but as soon as they see him, they're like, I love that guy. That's the kind of actor you want. Um, so I, the casting director sent the script to his agents, and then um, they were like, uh, within a couple of days, I, I got a call saying, Will uh, loves the script. He's going to call you tonight and, and talk about it just out of the blue. So uh, I was a little nervous, but I was excited. I mean, the fact that he was going to call and chat meant that he liked it. And, uh, yeah, it was the beginning of it. It sounds cheesy, but uh, we're, we're still very good friends to this day. We talk regularly, so. He comes back and he goes over to the crib because we had the crib in there at this point. And I think maybe when I was younger, I would I thought of each film as, like, this is my one and only chance to break out. And if I don't succeed, I, you know, um, I'm going to be relegated to obscurity. But uh, I don't really think of it that way. Like, it's such a long process making a movie. Like, this is almost five years from the time I came up with the idea. I mean, I, I've written other scripts and adapted a novel in that time, so you're always keeping busy. I tend to think of it now more like chapters in a book. I don't put too much pressure on myself. I mean, you do your best job, and then it's on to the next one. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? The purpose of your visit? The response has been has been great. It's exceeded my expectations, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, especially in the U.S., we've got a lot of coverage and really positive reviews from places like Roger Ebert, The Hollywood Reporter, Variety. Um, you know, we're up to 30 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes now. It's it's really great. I mean, all you can hope for is that accomplished, articulate critics see what you're going for. I mean, when it's positive, you tend to think they're very smart and insightful. And when it's negative, you tend to think they're churlish and, and self-involved. So it's just the nature of the business. What are you doing? The movie is very much about a relationship between a father and son. I come from a really, um, you know, uh, tight-knit family, strong household. And my father, who's a pretty well-known Newfoundland artist named Ian Sparks, um, his nickname was Hammer. Uh, so it seemed like it's it, what I did. The story is obviously not directly about my dad, but it seemed like an homage to a great man, a man I love, you know, very much. Obviously, he's my father. Uh, sadly, he passed away um, during the editing of this film, uh, as did the father of my producing partner, Allison White. So it's uh, it's bittersweet, certainly. Good. Yeah. I'm Chris. Wayne. Hey, nice to meet you, Wayne. Yeah. It can be What's challenging that? for sure. I mean, you know, working in a in a vacuum, uh, working in a small place like St. John's. Great film community, though. I mean, 
I've been lucky. I've had the support of a, a really close friend and producing partner, Alison White, who I'd never be able to do what I do w without. Um, you know, support of the local film community and co-ops. We made a bunch of short films. This is my second feature now, uh, hopefully prepping to make my third soon. And in the meantime, I've done a bunch of commercial work for Newfoundland Tourism, um, Teachers Union, those kind of things. So I I've been pretty fortunate, to be honest.